In Eve, the only thing worth more than Isk is trust. It's October 4th in Amsterdam. Eve is real. Hello and welcome back, everyone. This is CCB Fozzie, joined once again by Apothne, and we are bringing you Affirmative versus Choke Point. Uh, another match with between two teams that are up against the wall. These guys need to win or else they are out of the tournament. And uh, Choke Point have really decided to throw back to last year and have brought a triple Dominix team. That's three Dominixes, a Nero, Vexor Navy issue, Vengeance, triple Merlin, double Punisher, 11 pilots, and... Uh, 60 of their points used up just by those three Dominics. It'll be interesting to see how well it works out. They have worked in at 50. And why don't you tell us a little bit about this affirmative team, Apothe? Yeah, so Affirmative have a really aggressive team with two Slepnirs, one in the back though, two Hamgus, but then a very, very scary anti-frig wing, which is going to do a lot of damage to choke points frigs, uh, with two heretics, three towers and two Merlins. The game starts, and let's have a look at the drone drop choice of the Dommies. Yep, it is guards. guards. They know Affirmative <laughs> want to come in close. Yep, so that's going to be drones that'll be used probably to kill off the uh, approaching Slepnirs and uh, Tengu. They're not going to be quite as good at killing that uh, Scimitar all the way at the back, but uh, we're seeing damage being applied to a choke point Merlin, probably from the light missiles of these Talwars, and uh, damage going onto a Talwar and a Scimitar. Uh, and the Nero's actually of choke points starting to take a lot of damage. Let's see if they can break through the armor tank. Looks like a tower of Mavari is going to drop at the same time as a Merlin does. All right, that scimitar of affirmative is going down. He is boosting with his shields, but he's losing hull at every single volley. And it looks like, yep, he is oh, dropping off the field. So that Aeneros, though, is about to be falling behind. He is now at about 20% armor, and he now has the entire affirmative team on top of him. So there is going to be a pretty rapid trade here of uh, logistics. Yeah, it looks like uh, newts are spreading from, I'm guessing, the dummies to several different ships. They're doing a quite a good job there, a great way to fill the highs of your dummies with newts. But uh, it's not really doing much to stop the incoming DPS of a missile and projectile-based damage system. Yeah, at this point, uh, killing off the frigates is what, and the destroyers is what both teams are going to be focusing on now that they don't have the protection of those logistics. They're easy targets. They can be killed quickly, and they remove a lot of DPS and utility off the field. Uh, and then they're going to move into some of these big ships. Now, this is going to be a really interesting comparison to see how well three Dominics can stand up against two Tangos and two Slepnirs. The Tangos and Slepnirs are going to have the advantage of some great shield defenses uh, with probably ASBs, while the Dominics just have a lot of hit points. And we're going to see as that first Dominix of G Generic uh, is taking damage. We'll yeah. see how good his armor tank is. I mean, he's, he's lasting a good while, and this is time that, uh, in, uh, that uh, Choke Point need to use. They need to do something whilst their Dommy tank's being chewed through. And as it stands, I don't see any damage being applied. So the damage is being applied to uh, Aaron Solet in the Slepnir. Oh, he's at about 70%, but he's boosted up to about 85. So he's actually sitting quite pretty right now. As long as his ASB is boosting, he's probably going to be able to tank through a lot of this yeah, damage. The problem like the is, his ASB is going to go into reload suit. The first Dommy is about to pop, though. Mm -hmm. First Dommy for Choke Point about to pop. That's a third well, just less than a third of their DPS last on the field with that VNI still alive. And uh, another Dommy will be following soon, I should assume. Yeah, Aaron is going to be uh, following behind pretty quickly, though, as he's now into armor. Slepnirs usually don't last too long in armor. Uh, and uh, really, Affirmative needs to knock down this second Dominix of Sergeant Saint here uh, really fast. If they can get him off the field before they uh, take too much damage to any of their other Tangus or Slepnirs, then they're going to be in great shape. And Aaron is holding on just on the, like, the skin of his oh. teeth. Boosting back up in uh, Lowe's hull, but now he's on reload, and that's going to be the end of him. For two such wildly different setups, this has been a really, really close match. I mean, Has still, indeed. I think the choke point kind of have the advantage. They've got three big DPS ships left with a lot of buffer. Uh, I don't know, um, though. It's going to be like oh, the second Dominix is, is very low. So it, the fact that Aaron there was able to survive that long, that gave the uh, affirmative team the ability to knock this Dominix down. But he is micro jump driving. He has his micro jump drive active. He's going to try to blink away before he dies, and I think he's going to do it. Oh! If he gets away, that'll be all the damage on him reduced. Is he scrammed? I 
don't nope, think he's he out. There he goes. He got to the other side of the and arena. As he does a slip near dies. Wow, that is a huge micro jump drive by SGX Saint and choke point. Structure. In low structure, he managed to jump all the way away from this damage because the affirmative damage, be it auto cannons and uh, hams, can't reach all that far. They need to either chase him down or switch targets, neither of which are really good options. Looks like they're going to try to take down the Vexor Navy issue, which is, I think, a fine choice in this case if they can get on top of him. But uh, it's going to be really tough now. These Tangus ha would have to be a gigantic heroes. Tangu in the Two, or two Tangus and a Worm versus two Dominixes, a Vexor Navy issue and a Punisher. The Both DNI is going to be dropped. Still damp, so it means that Sergeant Dominix is going to have a lot of trouble doing uh, DPS to the Tangus down there. It is, out, however, sending augmented hammerheads by yes. the looks of it. The thing is, his drones are going to auto aggro, her. and there's no bad targets for his drones to auto aggro right now. Because there's I only mean, three targets for them. The, it's, that worm is, gonna, is dropping fast. It looks yeah. like the worm is getting new to Nost and is off the field. Wow. All right. At this point, there is. The, two uh, Tengus <laughs> versus two Dommies. Two the Punisher's about to drop, but one of the Dommies is really close to death. Two right. the Tengus have a partially active tank, is my question. I, I have to imagine that they're going to have ASBs on these. Well, well, we'll see. I haven't seen a boost quite yet from this uh, first Tengu of Onslaughter. It might oh, be the third of so all passive. So close! Two versus two, down all right. to the last men. So, if we have five minutes left, there's definitely time is not going to be an issue here. What these Tengus have decided to do, instead of trying to chase the uh, Dominics that jumped across the field, they're going to try to kill the Dominics that close. If they can finish off this Dominix before they lose one of the Tengus, then they're almost guaranteed to win this. But if they lose one of the Tengus and Onslaught is continuing to drop down. He is passive tanked, uh, so he is like getting a recharge uh, out of his shields. And for passive shield tank ships, when they hit around 30% shields, that's when their tank is the strongest. So his tank is just about at his strongest now, but once he gets past that, he's going to start dropping pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, Onslaught is dropping into low shield. Yeah. Uh, Khaleesi's Dommy, you know, he's in the three quarters armor. He's sitting pretty. He can sit for quite a long time eating damage from both the Tengus. When it goes down to one Tengu, it's going to take forever to burn through a Dommy. All right. So Onslaughter is looks like trying to get a longer orbit out, but unfortunately he's just taking a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, he is uh, into armor now, and that means he's going to evaporate pretty quickly. Tangus are not known for surviving long in armor and structure, and that is going to be him off the field. So that's going to leave Grey Gal, the captain for affirmative, as the yes. lone Tangu. Now, Grey Gal, of course, with a passive shield tank, the amount of DPS that she can knock off the field, if she can kill this she, Dominix in half armor really, before really she sick. dies, then her tank may actually just be at a perma tank the damage from SGX Saint. So it's actually up to uh, this Dominic. So the Dominic Kalisa is down to about maybe 35, 40% armor. Uh, she has that big lead, uh, but she is dropping with under the uh, newts and damage from two Dominic, well, newts from one, damage from two Dominixes. If she can kill Kalisa before she goes below about 30% shield herself, then she might just be at a permitting. It looks like she might be able to do so. I mean, Kalisa already dropping oh, into so a close. third armor. She's in half shield. But Dragal's down below half shield as well. This is incredibly close. This yep. match actually could still go just, either way. Just hitting the max regen. I mean, we've still got three minutes. We can definitely see what mm -hmm. the result is. Yep. I mean, if a Grey Gal can till, kill that Dommy, even if she's just got a sliver of shield left, she'll be sitting pretty. Uh, I mean, it looks if it's like a sliver, the, though, then one Dominix can take you. Once she's below max shield regen, one Dominix I mean, will probably have to finish her off, because she's going to have to burn across Saint the field has to get dropped to Curators. He's trying to kill her with Curators. Um, they're not going to do amazing damage here, but they will he's, do a significant amount. He's at a great range for Curators. Uh, and Curators are going to be hitting the best damage type against Grey Gal. Grey Gal is well below her max shield regen at this point. Uh, she's going to be dropping into armor. It does look like she's actually not going to be able to finish off Kalisa before uh, she goes down because she is now into armor. Mm. Kalisa is still in about 10% uh, armor. That is going to be the match. Incredibly close. Grey Gal cool. flying the hero Tengu. The final almost Tudomi managed to pull in, it off. Literally in structure. Now that really came down. SGX Saint with an incredibly clutch micro jump drive. If he had activated that a couple of seconds later, he would have died. And uh, that kept him alive and kept the damage going. So amazing win for Choke Point. Uh, that means they get to stay alive and come back next weekend. Affirmative, knocked out of the 12th Alliance tournament. Again, like I said before, with Electable, hopefully they'll be back soon uh, for the next Alliance tournament. And we will be back very soon for Sinosaur Field Theory versus Castabats. Whether you're into gate camping or jet can mining, you'll find Eve's best music mix at Eve Radio.
I like waffles. I like waffles. Do you like waffles? Yes. Yes, I like like waffles. And pancakes and French toast.
You want to stay up to date on the market? You spend most of your time blowing stuff up, but you want to know why plex are so damn high? Then watch Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. Eve Talk with me, the Lone Wolf, every Saturday, only on YouTube. Poisonous leadership. Poisonous leadership. Poisonous leadership. Poisonous leadership. Poisonous leadership. All right. Welcome back, everyone. This is CCB Fozzy, joined once again by Apothe, and we are bringing you the next match in the uh, 12th Alliance Tournament. This is Sinusaur Field Theory versus Castabouts, and uh, apparently today is throwback day because we are seeing another Dominix team from Sinusaur Field Theory. They have brought triple Dominix, Aniros, Hyena, Triple Ishker, Malediction, Triple Tristan, uh, and came in at uh, fairly long range, sent the Dommies in 30 and the rest of the team in at 50. And why don't you tell us a little bit about this Castabouts team, Apothe? So the Castabouts team has something that we've seen quite a lot this alliance tournament we've got a uh, triple gila really really popular with two rattlesnakes as well so very top heavy team point size with a simi for logi we've got a corax typically used to support a logistics um then we have um two merlins a kestrel and a slasher so a nice round of t1 frigs to finish them so off. the match has now begun the teams came in from pretty much opposite beacons so they're quite a ways away from each other and there are no drones dropped from the uh, sinusaur field theory dommies yet it looks up oh, there they go they're coming in now and it looks like we got bouncers bouncers yeah, long range, long range. so yeah they're going to be trying to do some sniping probably going to try to knock out uh, that scimitar but we'll see how well they do as we're seeing fire already into one of the dummies of tinkerhell the captain for sinus Royal field theory yeah the gila of lara actually burning straight in the enemy team around the back slightly looks like we've got a lot of armor maintenance spots out for the Sino team same as they did last time they really like having a super strong tank looks like the dps as you say is being applied to tinkerhell let's see whether or not he can tank the armor bots moving over now he is definitely he's going into half armor he's dropping pretty quickly and there's no significant damage on the castabouts team yet that suggests to me that they they're aiming those drones at something that they can't track uh whatever it is they're not hitting it whether it's they're trying to go after one of the healers or merlins whereas with those are what we're seeing some yeah it looks like we're seeing some damage on the merlin not a great choice to send your sentries after a merlin early oh, if that's what's hitting Tinker's there. going he is Tinker's going, going down fast and that is going to be a huge huge blow to sinus Oral field theory one of their three dominixes again those are 20 points each these are super expensive ships for a tournament and their team captain as well yeah, and he is now off the field. And they're gonna, it looks like Castabouts is just saying, screw the rest of this team. We're going to go just take dummies. the Dominixes down right off the field. And uh, it obviously worked for the first one. Dominix, of course, with Tech 1 tanks, uh, a lot of buffer, but they don't rep as well as uh, some of the other ships, like Nishker put. So it is yeah, not enough. They, they are not getting enough reps in from that Daenerys to keep them alive. Yeah, I mean, Castabouts now, I mean, their frigates are starting to take a little bit of damage, but they're just flying really well. They're staying at max range, really mitigating any incoming DPS, while mm -hmm. they just slug away at those dommies that just can't do that. Yeah, I mean, these drones are just not tracking from the dommies. Uh, I'm going to try to get a good look at what exactly what they're doing. It looks like they may have uh, abandoned them and switched to something else, for at least some of them, but uh, yeah, it's not doing the job. Whatever it is, Sinosaur Field Theory has already lost two of the dominies. The third is about to follow, and mm -hmm. Castabouts has yet to lose a ship. This there are so many arm. There are so many rep drones that aren't repping this dummy. There's like 15 medium and lights that just aren't on Meglar's dummy. They're having a lot of trouble uh, managing both their offensive and defensive drones, and it's really screwing them up here. Yep. Uh, yeah. The, the big 
groups of them. They're just kind of uh, following around. Like they will say they have one group following an Ishkur and not keeping up with the Ishkur. I don't know exactly what they're trying to do there, but that is going to be their third Dami exploding on your yeah. screen. And this, uh, that's all just... the DPS almost. Uh, they have three Ishkurs into Maledictions, some Tristans, which are probably just fit with um, armor maintenance spots. There's nothing they can really do at this point to cast about Steam. This is a like an incredibly confident performance from cast about. So often mm -hmm. you come up against a team like this and you're going to try to you know be careful. Let's see if we knock down the Aneros first, pick off some frigates. Um, <coughs> but what they just decided to do was we're go in and punch those Dominixes in the face, and uh, it paid off perfectly in this case. I mean, these are two teams that are probably going to see a lot of each other on Tranquility. They probably have a relationship between the two corps. I mean, uh, cast about is typically mm -hmm. PvP in Syndicate. You've got Nocturnal uh, Romance, you know, right next door in Placid, you know, with their supers and carriers and all that good stuff. So they probably run e to each other on Tranquility. The pilots probably know each other. So it's very interesting to see how two teams that may fight against each other and have different records on Tranquility come to the AT and see how they do against each other here. And cast about, of course, is a team that has impressed us in the past in tournaments uh, mm -hmm. with the eight cast team that they have brought in previous Neos. Um, and uh, this is a pretty, pretty strong showing. This is definitely them staking the claim to be a team that you don't want to run into in this loser's bracket because uh, they're already just knocking off Sinosaur Field Theory without looking like they're breaking a sweat. I have to say, I'm really, really glad they decided to give up on the let's bring only six pilots as we saw <laughs> in the last round that really cost them much. Here, they've got a really well thought out setup, a lot of damage, they've got a lot of strong support. You can make a lot of decisions with that setup, whereas with a setup like Domi's, as we said, you, when you bring Domi's, you're committing to just kind of sitting there and trying to tank. Yep. You can't really do much beyond that. Your choices are in that of your drones and on where you play your newts if they come within newt range. Well, it's kind of funny. You mentioned Casabout's not bringing a six-player uh, team like they did last time, but they actually didn't have the option to bring that because Sinosaur Field Theory went with a very targeted ban. Uh, Casabout's last time brought uh, what is really the only legitimate reason to have only six pilots, which is you're flying a tinker. And they uh, ran a tinker with a Tango Logistics and uh, we saw now Sinosaur Field Theory has decided to ban out shield tinkers as completely as po you can. You ban the Tango and Loki, that means you don't want to face a shield tinker. Uh, and uh, they obviously didn't want to, I can see why they didn't want to face that with Dominixes, but Castabouts came in here with super high DPS Rattlesnakes and Healers and uh, just cleared the field with them. And that is the match. with. Only taking like less than half of the time allotted to them, Castabouts has entirely destroyed yeah. the Sinosaur Field Theory team. Not, not Turner, I'm not going to be happy with that at all. And uh, with that, that means Castabouts moves forward uh, through the loser's bracket and will live to fight another day. And we'll be back after some ads in just a moment for Unthinkables versus the Devil's Warriors Alliance. See you in a bit. worth more than Isk is trust. It's October 4th in Amsterdam. Eve is real. <laughs> 